I'm Chris. This is Fox News. Oh, no, this is actually Movies and Munchies. This is my mug. Here are today's headlines. What happens when talented, intelligent women take on the establishment to protect themselves from predatory male bosses? Bombshell takes a look at the story of Roger Ailes and his behavior towards women at the Fox News Network. I loathe politics. As far as the news goes, I strongly dislike it with great intensity. So can a guy like me get any enjoyment out of a film that circles these two topics like vomit going down a drain? This is the mostly true tale of the women that brought down predatory male executive at Fox News, Roger Ailes. I say mostly true because there are a few characters who are made up, but they represent larger groups of people within this one character. So. I can't say it's absolutely 100% true because this character as a person doesn't exist, but they were a representative of a lot of people. So it's true there. You, you get what I'm saying, right? But there are still plenty that are based on actual real people with real names. Charlize Theron portrays Megyn Kelly, the lawyer turned Fox News host who famously took barbs from Donald Trump during the presidential campaign. Nicole Kidman plays Fox host Gretchen Carlson. Now, both of these women are absolutely wonderful to watch on screen. They are strong, they are driven, they are highly intelligent, and they play their characters with a lot of depth to them. I mean, they have to pull on a lot of emotional range because they have to be strong, they have to be reserved almost in certain aspects, but then they have to be able to be devastated and just fierce as well. And we get to see that really well portrayed by them just in every aspect. And what they did with their characters really drew me into them and drew me into the story even more. Margot Robbie plays a character not necessarily based on one real person. I mean, she's kind of made up just as the person itself, but she represents a large group of female victims in the story. A definite standout in this is John Lithgow. He is playing Roger Ailes and he is disgusting and just a degenerate. And he's wearing this fat suit that really transforms him. I mean, yeah, okay, so you put a lot of makeup on and then it becomes a different person, right? And that, that can make up for the acting. Well, no, his acting is spot on as well. I mean, he just, he confused me a little bit because at times he just looked like a driven man, just an executive who was just, just trying to get, you know, to the next level or I'm just trying to push this network. And then at the same time, Oh my gosh, dude, your junk needs to be cut off, your tongue needs to be cut off, and then you just need to be beaten to a pulp with your own arms. He really conveyed the way that he could use his power and position over people, just in a real way. I mean, I felt it. It was, it was convincing. And so I think that's why I really liked his character, or at least I liked the performance. I didn't like the character at all. I don't like the real person. Now, there are some times where they have actors playing real people also, and I so that's weird because Charlize Theron and Nicole Kidman and John Lithgow are playing real people. But what I mean is they have actors who are in, so let's take Bill, Bill O'Reilly, for example. They have an actor playing Bill O'Reilly, but then they do something with CGI on his face where they are trying to morph the actor's face to look more like Bill O'Reilly, and it is an utter fail. I mean, it is terrible. It just, it, it pulls me out of the movie because it is so bad. I much would have rather preferred them have the group of this news huddle that they were already having. And you could tell by other clues and even write in a, a line of dialogue that Taz puts in context who they're talking to, that it's Bill O'Reilly and don't show him. Show him from behind the head, show him over the shoulder of somebody else so he's obscured. Any other way than to do what they did because they executed it so poorly. Theron is the film's narrator, explaining details and even the inner workings of the Fox News Network. And she talks directly to the camera at points. And I like that. And it didn't draw me out and it didn't feel weird or awkward. It, even though it was breaking that fourth wall and talking directly to us as the audience, it made sense a lot of the time. I mean, it really, actually it made sense all of the time. It didn't feel out of place at all. Maybe that's because she's portraying a news anchor who does talk directly to us, or maybe just because of how it was crafted and how good of a job that she does and the content that's coming through. It's not meant as a joke. It's not meant as an aside. It's not meant as any of that. It's really to pull the audience in, to make us part of the story, to bring us just right up to date and to fill us in. This is a fairly quick one hour and 48 minute watch. I didn't feel it dragged at all, but the story that was being told was clear 
and cohesive. And that's especially when you consider that I didn't know really anything about this story because I don't watch the news. I don't pay attention to the news. I don't care about the news. I, I, I'm living my own life. What's happening around me? Yes, you can argue that, well, it does affect me. Well, yeah, it does, but I can't do anything about what I see on TV. So there you go. Take that for what it's worth. Don't hate me in the comments. Let's not get into a political discussion in the comments because I just, I honestly, I'm apathetic to it. it I, it's, I respect your views and you can totally have your views and good on you. And I'm not going to take those away from you, but let me sit in my own apathy. Story's really interesting to watch as it unfolds. And the, the characters, the actors themselves do a really good job at portraying who they are portraying and putting this really good story together. Yes, not everything works in it, but the story itself moved me. And I, I appreciate now knowing about it, especially because I used to be in the news industry. I used to be in radio. I even worked for a station that carried Fox News, that was a Fox News affiliate. We weren't Fox News, we we're independently owned outside of that. But I just, so for me on a personal note, that was kind of interesting. And yes, that's also a conundrum, right? That I loathe the news, but yet I worked for a news organization. How in the world did that work? Well, I didn't work in the newsroom. I worked in marketing and promotions, and I worked on the websites, and I worked on all kinds of other things that were not the news. And I still have plenty of friends in the news, and I love them dearly, and they are awesome people, and they are very passionate about what they do. Outstanding for them and I root them on constantly. There's no sex, nudity, or violence, but there are graphic descriptions of all three of those, and then obviously there is profanity. I give Bombshell four out of five couches. So are you a news junkie? What is your go-to network so that keeps you informed? Let me know in the comments below. Again, like I said, I will totally respect your decision to absolutely love the news. Me, mm, just don't care about it. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris, this is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.